DC is in such a funny place right now, especially when it comes to the screen, right? Like, cause just recently you had the Penguin conclude, and by all accounts, that was a fantastic series of television, but who knows what that's going to do, right? Like, I didn't watch the show, I've heard some reviews from people, some very surface level stuff, and yeah, I like me a gangster flick, that's the way that it ended up being packaged, or presented rather, is that it's, yeah, you know, a mob story in the Batman universe, and well, Colin Farrell and the chick playing Sophia, Cor yeah, Sophia, I was going to say Corleone, but that's obviously not the case. Falcone, rather. Yeah, Falcone. They were fantastic in it. Their story was a tremendous. And yeah, some people are trying to find a way that they could work at Penguin Season 2 or continue that story, continue those characters' journeys. Maybe they could find a way to do that. that can, we get, can we get that? Because it's actually well-received. And then also, you got Joker 2 and the fact that oof, its entire box office run didn't even eclipse the original opening weekend of the first Joker back in 2019. So it's a it's such a strange IP in flux. It's there's so many things that people are looking forward to. Like even the second look appraisals when it comes to Matt Reeves's Batman, people are getting a renewed sense of wonder for that i think that's coming out next year but then of course you've also got to wonder it's like okay how is james gunn james gunn and his rebooted dcu supposed to handle this because next year in july you've got the kickoff in superman that's going to be telling his entire story that is also all planned out so how does all of this stuff work together okay because i guess we've got a little bit of insight on this one as to continuing anything outside of the purview of james gunn's cinematic universe because there were some ideas and there were some rumors floating around i think last week or something like that in and around the conclusion of the penguin right where uh, a spin-off series starring a barry ogan's joker i think i'm pronouncing that right said to be in the works and then i heard that get rebuked by james gunn or at least some rumors surrounding that so you have rumors commenting on rumors that no that isn't the case so because barry cogan's joker got introduced at the tail end of the batman that leads people to believe that, okay, Batman 2, it's going to be the finality. It's going to be the conclusion of Matt Reeves as Batman. But then at the same time, it's like, well, you got all of these characters that are in there that people want to actually see. And for the first time in a long time, under the umbrella of DC, there's some enthusiasm around your property. So instead of that, you're going to be starting fresh and brand new. It's like, you can't win for losing out there. DC actually has something on their hands that is both critically and commercially successful in Penguin. That was at the top of the charts for I'm pretty sure all eight weeks that it was being released and then also want to build off of that momentum like you could go that way that is definitely something that you could do even if you just wanted to keep it on tv separate yourself out that way you could make that work there is a history with dc and especially with the, you know the batman side of things where if you have a procedural you have a episodic layout for stuff you can make that work and then there's also another medium that has been exceptionally kind for decades to the batman property and that's video games. Even going all the way back to that old NES Sunsoft classic. While Superman has stuttered and staggered outside of animation and cinematic, most of the cinematic releases, video games haven't been kind to the original superhero, but it has been. And it's recently, within the past 10 to 20 years, it has been for The Dark Knight. But his most recent outing, yeah, it was more Joker 2 than the Penguin with Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. And well, looks like they're going back to the well. This is like seeing what Todd Phillips did with Foile 2 and going, you know what, Todd? Want another $200 million? Because we want Joker 3. Because, bro, Rocksteady and Warner Brothers. Like, it was rumored earlier this year that, oh yeah, they're working on another Arkham game. And it's like, oh my god, bro. You were working on that VR experience, which I think came out. But it's, like, that whole VR space is so segmented and so underdeveloped where it's like I, I don't even know where to start when it comes to commenting on that stuff I'm never going to get a VR headset at least with the technology that I see out there right now none of it looks appealing and it hasn't looked appealing over the past 20 years that has been forced upon us so no thanks I'm good and after costing Warner Brothers 400 million dollars or was it 200 million no that's Concord that was 400 million dollars my mistake 200 million dollars to Warner Brothers they go you know what just remake 
and mod uh, make for the modern audience arkham asylum one of the most beloved not just batman games but the in uh, beloved games for the entire seventh generation of consoles bro oh jesus this could be a train wreck brother warner brothers games and rocksteady are rumored to be working on a remake of batman arkham asylum following the financial and creative disaster of suicide squad kill the justice league so is that what we're stuck in right now i could take a look at uh, the vast majority of games that come out this year it's, it's reboots sequels and remakes makes some of them are good like silent hill 2 right uh silent hill 2 remake very, held in very high regards in the form of sequel remake i guess okay you got final fantasy 7 rebirth yes got my reference in where we're talking video games on that one but outside of that it's like where's the ingenuity where's the creativity all right western gaming industry kind of stuck in this doom loop because whenever you're given purchase to do whatever you want you end up with Dragon Age the Veilguard continuing on a beloved IP and perverting it for the modern audience, which is exactly what Rocksteady is liable to do here. Latest rumor comes from YouTuber Var Dark. Okay, who originally wrote on X, Rocksteady is adding Deathstroke and the real Batman, uh, the one we originally wanted to see, into Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League for the last two seasons interesting seems they are desperate to get players back into a game that is too late yeah exactly because okay cool yeah add in characters that people want but it's wrapped in just a terrible mechanics and awful storytelling it would be like okay cool for final fantasy fans that are out there yeah we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna put cloud strife in 20 er, and uh final fantasy 13 you like that right it's like no no i don't I don't want Cloud with his buster sword walking down that hallway simulator where he eventually go and beat up the Pope. No, I don't want that. I, I really don't. But it's all right. You know it'll be there too. It's like, just stop it. Anyways, Warner Brothers we, uh, recently spoke about the franchises they'd like to focus on and DC, specifically Batman, was mentioned. Yeah, they uh, there was some... I seen that on Culture Crave or something like that. I forget who exactly they were quoting, but I think it was Variety or something like that. But yeah, they want to hone in. Okay, they want to IP mine harry potter game of thrones something else and then of course dc i can't remember what that fourth one was but it's like yeah of course that's your most popular stuff so why wouldn't you try to double down on that especially for a company that is what 40 billion dollars in debt it's like yeah get to it you know start making some good stuff so it's like yeah okay cool you want to focus in on dc yeah make the make the good stuff make the penguin type stuff not hand the keys back to the drunk driver that crashed the really expensive lamborghini that took the bugatti out for a drive and did some bono type shit with it like what are we doing she continued okay talking to var dark here uh same source told me layoffs were incoming months ago yes and were correct they tell me internally greenlit a remake of arkham asylum and will be uh, and will potentially be continuing the arkham verse with the origins voice cast interesting uh they recently got back together and did arkham shadows uh, with a camouflage yeah i think shadows was the vr gimmick right i think if i recall that correctly but yeah uh, this is not the first time we've heard the rumor that rocksteady will be returning to batman back in september sheep's Nick okay shared the company was working on a Batman game yeah and I also find this very interesting because he's quote tweeting the game awards with stupid old Jeff Keighley who is liable to have a multitude of announcements for the game awards that is happening mid-December or something like that which I would imagine we're very likely to hear what Rocksteady is going to be working on okay with this Batman game, he has also been teasing some other stuff when it comes to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Like, just give us a date on a PC release, okay? The pathetic release of the PS5 Pro has proven that, oh yeah, no, nobody's excited about that stuff. So yeah, if, uh, Square Enix and Sony has got all the promotion that they can uh, ring out of that. With Rebirth getting a pro mode, it's like, okay, cool, just... um the guys do a pc port and preferably have it come out before the end of the year a boy can dream where you can get shadow dropped at the same time the announcement gets made on stage can we go ahead and do that but uh i'm just hoping i'm just praying mostly because this entire year when it comes to gaming like i said there's been some incredible bright spots but it's mostly just been a malaise and a reinforcement that the western gaming industry is heading towards a collapse the indie game market will go ahead and buoy any lost souls off to the bright shores of valhalla but thank god they can't steal all of your back catalog even though valve has told you that you don't own the games that you purchase on their platform 
If you've got physical copies, if you've got access to older hardware, you're going to be good for a very long time so they can continue to pervert and destroy like Rocksteady, Warner Brothers, Games, Bioware, or any other studio that is out there that has been infected with the woke mind virus. If you want to play a fun assass- or if you want to play a fun Assassin's Creed game, boot up Black Flag, boot up the Ezio trilogy. You don't have to subject yourself to whatever the blue hell we're going to be getting in February with Shadows. There's still great games that you have not played that have come out in the past 10 to 15 years. You don't have to look for to the future because obviously and honestly you aren't going to be missing out on much we can go ahead and talk about how poorly these things are performing based on how badly written and how poorly executed they are to save you from any heartbreak and any excess money being wasted let all the wasted funds be spent by the likes of warner brothers and ea so with all that said thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo i want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone